like many of you, and I started playing the flute when I was eight years old. But music really came alive for me when I was able to have my own flute students. And every Saturday morning, I was able to teach young students the flute. And it wasn't just about music for me. It was about the relationships that I was building with these young students through the music we got to create together and the way that I was able to share my music with them. And this concept excited me and infatuated me through college as I studied music education. I had the opportunity to go to Costa Rica and um, play alongside a young student orchestra there. I spoke very little Spanish, and um, this young student here spoke very little English. So we didn't really have a way to communicate, and yet we were sitting alongside each other in an orchestra playing flute together. At one point in the rehearsal, there was a pause and we had a break and everyone dispersed and yet this student and I were sitting together. We didn't have a way to communicate. Yet he turned to me and somehow, I don't really know how still, but somehow asked me for help on the piece of music that he was learning. And I agreed. So he picked up his flute and played the first phrase of music, something like this. I thought for a moment to pick up my own flute and I began playing the same phrase in a way slightly different that I thought you should change it. He nodded his head in agreement and picked back up his flute and played it in the same way that I had just played it from him. And back and forth we went, phrase by phrase by phrase, communicating through our flute playing. Two people who otherwise would have no means of communication, no other connection, and yet here we were connecting and communicating because of music. Jean Sibelius said this so well when he said, music begins where the possibilities of language end. This idea and this concept excited me so much that I was able to travel to Wuhan, where I am now teaching in an international music school here. And I get to teach my students who are from all over the world. One thing that I especially love in my own classroom is getting to conduct my band students. Sometimes, though, I worry that my young band students just think I go up on the stage and just foil my arms about aimlessly, trying to get them to play something. So instead of this mm, miscommunication, I decided to teach my young band students how to conduct. So in four simple steps, I taught them. Step one walk up to the podium, and as you do, the ensemble silences. Step two, raise your arms, and as you do, the ensemble raises their instruments in anticipation of playing. And step three, take a deep breath and give the downbeat. And step four, the music begins to play. I had one young alto saxophone player who came to me one day and he said, Miss Pack, conducting sounds like so much fun. Could I be the conductor instead of the alto saxophone player? And I said, mm, no, that's my job. But he was determined that he was going to conduct his classmates. So one day I found him in my classroom, playing jingle bells in the back of my classroom, and he decided he was going to conduct them. So he walked over to them. They silenced. He raised his arms. They raised their instruments. And with 11-year-old eager anticipation, as if to begin a race, he dropped his arms and go! Of course, no music began to play. <laughs> they just looked around and laughed at each other. But as I looked around this classroom of students, these young beginning band students, and I saw the students behind the instruments they were playing. Yes, we had a diverse amount of instruments. We had uh, flutes, clarinets, saxophones, trumpets, trombones, too, but many different instruments. But the students behind those instruments were diverse. They were from many different nations. A Korean flute player, a Japanese clarinet player, a Brazilian saxophone player, a Chinese trumpet player, an Italian percussionist, the list went on and on and on. Students from all over the world discovering connection to each other through music. They were able to cross barriers of language and culture and social and economic barriers and they cross those barriers through music. In my classroom, students are able to linguistically connect with those whom they ordinarily would not be able to communicate with. They're able to stand and sing in harmony with students whose nations are in disagreement with their own. 
this concept it just it so impassions me to be a music teacher each and every day. And that is one of the reasons why tonight I would like to create a little bit of a music classroom here for us today. So we're going to start together by creating some rhythm. Yes, that's right. We're going to create a little bit of a TEDx Sanu School choir. So I need your help tonight. Can you go ahead and stand on your feet with me? Go ahead and stand up, everybody. So we're going to start with a really simple rhythm pattern. We're going to start with stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap. Can you join together with me when you have it ready? Here we go. And stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, again, stomp, stomp, clap, and stomp, stomp, clap. Hey, what do you think if we tried that rhythm on some of our bucket drums over here? I have five drums over here, and I have plenty more than five of you out there. Can I have five volunteers from the audience come on up here and try to play this rhythm with me on the drums? Come on up. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Come on up. Great. Okay, I have four. I need one more. Fantastic. Great. Go ahead and sit down on the drum. All right, we're going to try that same rhythm, but we're going to do it something like this. Listen once, then you get to try. Center, center, rim. Center, center, rim. The same rhythm, just a little bit different. Can you guys try that with me? Here we go. And as I do, let's stomp, stomp, clap to help them out. Ready? Here they go. And stomp, stomp, clap. Stomp, stomp. for just a moment, because now we're going to add some pitch. Yes, that's right, you have to sing tonight. We're going to add some pitch to what we're going to create here. So my pitches are going to be do, ti, la, and sol, but we're going to go really nice and slow so we can get all those pitches. So first, go ahead and show me your hands right up here. This is what we call do, and it sounds like this. Do, 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 can you try that? Do, do, do. Wow. Beautiful choir we have here tonight. Let's try that one more time. Do, 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 you try. Do, do, do. Next one is T, 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 your turn. T, T, T. Next one is La, 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 your turn. La, La, La. Last one is Sol, 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 your turn. Sol, Sol, Sol. Wow, I was not expecting that. Great job tonight. Now, what if we take those pitches? and turn it into a melody by adding a little bit of a rhythm to it. This is what our melody sounds like. Same pitches, different rhythm. Do, ti, la, sol, la, la. Listen one more time, then you're going to try. Pay close attention. Watch. Here we go. Do, ti, la, sol, la, la. OK, now you try with me. Ready? Here we go. Do, ti, la, sol, la, la. One more time. Here we go. Do, ti, la, so la la. That was fantastic. Now, what if we add some lyrics to that melody? We will, we will rock you. Yeah, you didn't know that was coming. Okay, let's try it with the lyrics and still using our hand sign. So it's going to look something like this. Just watch first. We will, we will rock you. Got it? Ready? Here we go. And we will, we will rock you. That was great. Now, we need our hands to clap. So you don't need to do your hand signs anymore. We're going to add our rhythm back in, and they're going to sing the melody for us, OK? Do you think you could do rhythm and melody together? All right, so let's try with stomp, stomp, clap. Center, center, rim. Ready? Here we go. And stomp, stomp. Many of us from different parts of the world, 
definitely different parts of Wuhan, different cultural language backgrounds, and yet here we are. For a brief moment in time, we synced our voices together to create a melody. We synced the beating of our hands and our feet to create a rhythm, and together we created music. This is what is so exciting to me about music, is the way that it connects one human soul to another. Music has the ability to do this for us, to be able to connect people together. Music education is fundamentally not about its academic values. Music education is not fundamentally about the glory that a student receives when he goes on stage to perform. Music education is fundamentally about the value of connecting one human soul to another. So what if we were able to take this concept to classrooms all around the world? We were able to show students that they could connect with those who were different than them through the power of music. We can teach students to cross language barriers by playing in a band where they don't need language to communicate. We can teach students to cross cultural barriers by communicating through melody and rhythm. We can teach students to create harmony with those whom they fundamentally disagree with. This is why I believe that music should exist in schools all around the world. And this is why I am a music teacher. Malcolm Arnold once said, music is the social act of communication, a gesture of friendship among people, the strongest there is. So TEDx Standard School, today, music is my gesture of friendship to you. Thank you.